I've got uh, a couple of books here that I use as references I want to just throw in front of you here. Uh, proof Without Words. There's Proof Without Words uh, 1. Of course, it was just Proof Without Words to begin with, and then I have Proof Without Words 2. Um, they just have lots of different pictures. You know, here's a picture of how one-fourth plus a fourth of a fourth plus a fourth of a fourth and so on down equals a third because the whole thing is cut into three equal sections. Anyway, um, there's um, a section in here with uh, trig and um, oh, I should point out that this book is um, um, National Association of America publishes it. Roger B. Nelson is not really the author of it. He uh, is more of the collector of all these proof by proof without words. Uh, several of them are his in here. In fact, we're going to look at one of his. And um, but there's a lot of other people that have contributed. So I want to look at um, some of our sine and cosine of a sum. And I'm I'm not going to explain most of these. I'm just going to flash them up here for you. You can uh, pause the video and and take a look at them more closely if you want. But here is the sine of a sum looking at a triangle. And they look at the area of this triangle and they show how uh, the whole area is equal to the sum of the two pieces, which ends up being our sine of a plus b, and so on. This is by Christopher Bruningson. That's the, the author of that one. Uh, this one here by Freebie and Ramos is one that I did uh, another video on here. Um, you can see that, that other video. Uh, they give a second uh, version of it down here. And these are very similar to proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, on the next page I've got the cosine of a sum. This is by Sidney H. Kong. Again, you may have to take a look at uh, what they're describing here and how this picture shows it, but uh, I'm just flashing them up in front of you here for now. And then the next page, the geometry of addition formulas. So they use this picture right here to end up with the sine of a plus b. And at the bottom they use a similar picture but the angles are just in different places. Let me see here. The A is the same but here the B moved from there to here and it just changed a little bit as to what side lengths were how long and they end up with the cosine formula. Okay, This is Leonard M. Smiley and the next page is also Leonard M. Smiley uh, showing the geometry of subtraction formula. So looking at this picture uh, somehow he ends up with the sine of a minus b and down below here he's got the cosine of a minus b Leonard M. Smiley alright a couple more and we'll get to the one I really want to talk about here is difference identities for tangents so here's a picture giving us the tangent of a minus b somehow. This is Guanshin Ren, is the name, author of that one, and Fukuzo Suzuki, uh, this one which is also the tangent of a difference. Somehow they do that. Again, you gotta, you gotta take a look at what's happening and follow it through. But here we go, here's the one that I want to look at. This is uh, one figure, six identities, and this is the, uh, the guy with his name on the front, Roger B. Nelson. Um, at least some of it's his, some of it is uh, used. This is, this is actually what we did uh, in, in class to get the sine and the cosine of A plus B. But this is the figure that's going to just, this picture labeling different sides. So here what we do is this length is 1, this is the angle A, that's the angle B. Right? We notice that this is the cosine of a plus b, that's the sine of a plus b, and then we look at some smaller pieces. So with the angle b there and the hypotenuse of 1, this is cos b, that's sine b, then this is the hypotenuse, this is the hypotenuse for this triangle down here, 
This is cos b times the sine of alpha. This is cos b times the cosine of alpha. And likewise up here, that angle is alpha. Anyway, this is the one we've already done. Now, the difference, if I look down below, we still have an angle, sorry, a side length of 1 along this hypotenuse, but A is now measured here, and B is right there. So that shaded triangle, the, air, the angle down here, is A minus B. All right, and so the cosine of A minus B is going to be this side here, and the sine of A minus B is going to be that side over there. Okay, so the cosine, we're going to end up with the sum of those two pieces. So the cosine is a sum this time. The sine of a minus b is this piece. It's going to be this whole thing minus that much, and hence the difference. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four identities just from that picture twice. Now on the next page, we're going to go back to this being a and this being b, but instead of this being length 1, this is now length 1 down here. And so in this triangle, with this being alpha, this side being 1, it turns out that side has to be the tangent of alpha, and this side has to be the secant. Now, looking at this triangle, with that being the secant and that being the angle of beta, this has to be secant alpha tangent beta. It's just like as the 1 got multiplied by tangent alpha to get there, this gets multiplied by tangent alpha to get here. Now, if this is tangent alpha, sorry, secant alpha tangent beta, then that's the hypotenuse. This is the angle A. So I'm dividing by the secant alpha to get here. That is, if this hypotenuse is the secant, you divide by the secant of alpha to get 1. If you scale that up, then this is going to be scaled up by the same factor. So this has been scaled up from secant A to secant A tan B. So the 1 gets scaled up by to tan b as well. So this ends up being tangent of, be of beta, this is tangent of alpha. So the tangent of this angle now is going to be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. No, the opposite side by the adjacent. The opposite side is the sum of those two things. The adjacent side is the difference between 1 and this little bit, which is what they have there. Okay. Likewise, doing the same thing for the a minus B, we're using that over here where A is this, so the angle on the outside here is A minus B. The tangent of that is going to be this side divided by that. This side becomes this length. This side becomes the difference of those two. Now the, the 1 is in a different place. They put the 1 here this time. Because A is there, A ends up up here, which is probably why they switched where the 1 is, because with A down here you got 1 as the adjacent side. With A up here, you still have 1 as the adjacent side, so the opposite side is tangent, the hypotenuse is secant. Okay. Anyway, that's um, one figure, six trig functions. Um, you may want to pause the video and take a look at each one, see if you can work your way through. If you have any questions, by all means, ask me about them. I love proof by pictures. <laughs>